In today's Britain, we see burqas, hate-preaching imams, the burning of books and the burning of the Union Jack flag. We see British-born suicide bombers on our TVs, the establishing of Islamic faith schools, and Muslim Lord Mayors representing some of our largest cities. There are plans underway for giant mosques as dominant features in the capital cities of England and Wales. Abridged and sanitised versions of Islam are taught to Christian children in schools and halal meat is served in our school dinners. Christian schoolgirls being sent home for wearing the crucifix. Are all these indications that Britain is being relentlessly pushed towards the acceptance of Islam as a dominant force in Britain? Is it true that those basic principles of Islam which are incompatible with Western secular democracy are being conveniently put to one side in the aim of promoting Islam as a creed of peace and tolerance? Are our liberal Western freedoms being exploited by Muslim groups whose ultimate objective is in fact to impose Islam and Sharia law in Britain? The banner has been risen for jihad inside the UK which means for them it's allowed for them to attack and they've probably got many other cells inside the UK. I have no allegiance to the British Queen whatsoever and to British society. In fact, if I see Mujahideen attack the UK, I am always stand with the Muslims. You don't want to live in the Sharia. But when he comes, I'm sure you'll change your mind. <laughs> As a young woman growing up in post 9-11 Britain, I have witnessed a great deal of bigotry from the media, politicians and legal officials. This bigotry resulted from my choice to wear a piece of cloth, not out of force, but out of my faith and belief in Islam. Alexander Graham came out. Bush came out at the same time. What did he say? He said, "You're either with us or you're either with the terrorists." And what did we Muslims say? We said, "We're not with you. We're with the terrorists." Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. Is it true that our liberal, pro-multicultural politicians are ill-informed about Islam, and that they are allowing themselves to be duped by Islamic fifth columnists? who are funded by rich fundamentalist Wahhabi Arabs waging the jihad against Britain from the Middle East. We examine these issues and ask to what extent there is a concerted effort, the jihad, by Islamic fifth columnists to change the nature of British society and its Western democratic values to conform to Islam.